some of the four horsemen questions that I know everybody's desperate to hear about. Uh, and I haven't got my glasses on, so if I'm really struggling with some of these names, it's unfamiliar names and they're all blurry as well. Uh, C. Reed and Here asks, what was your favourite incarnation of the four horsemen? And when was it? And uh, also, what was your favourite incarnation of the four horsemen when you were not in the group as well? So the, originally when you were within the group. Um, well, the original were good because we're the ones that started it. Um, the best group was the group that went in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Rick, Barry, Arn, and myself, and JJ. Um, after that, you know, it was putting people trying to rebirth something. And, uh, and I, I didn't watch wrestling, so I didn't, I don't really know who, what, where, mm-hmm. any of that. So the, the thing that everybody really doesn't sometimes understand, at least I think they don't understand, the, this was not Crockett and the the brain trusts sitting back and said, oh, we need to call these four guys the four horsemen. This was an eight-man tag match that interviews were just flowing, and Arn just called us the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And that somehow caught on and wrestling fans started having signs and four horsemen thing. And I can remember standing in, in the dressing room watching the, the preliminary matches in the Greensboro Coliseum. And Jim Crockett told, whispered in my ear, he said, this thing's getting over. And I said, you think? <laughs> and then they started pouring the, the gas to it. And it, it just it just exploded. But the thing that that was was so powerful was even at the start of it, you had Arn was a tag team, and then Rick and I were the singles. And then when when Ole left, it was you know how how do you substitute somebody in there? And uh, they had just hired Luger, so they put him in there. That was not really a, a, a great mix so that was short-lived um but the 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 powerful change when barry switched and became heel and became one of us then you had four performers that could really perform with anybody and it was it was just very dynamic and the the thing that the, the shift inside was Barry became the other single and then I became Arn's partner. And, and so that's, you know, how all that worked. And, uh, but it was, you know, I mean, we could, we could all go separately. We could all go uh, wrestle one-on-one. It didn't have to be the group all the time, even though we were part of the group. Why didn't Lex work out as a member of the four horsemen then, do you think? Well, at that point in Lex's career, he was very young in the business, looked great, but the horsemen were about doing the right things, not just looking right. And uh, it was it was it was a much better fix when we switched Barry heel and Lex babyface. And then we wrestled him. I know I had to wrestle him a number of times. And those were way better matches than than other ones that I was involved in. Mm. Uh, do you know that reminds me? Dutch, <clears throat> when he was in, Dutch Mantel by everybody, weekly podcast with him, of course. I've got to bring him up. He said <clears throat> once that uh, him and Bobby Jaggers were facing you and Lex Luger at one point. And apparently Lex went to the office or something like that and said, why would a Lex Luger wrestle a Dutch Mantel? A Dutch caught wind of it and he was like, Oof. 
he heard, he, uh, he heard that apparently. Wow. I, I never heard that, yeah. but. And then your response was, Lex, you just stay on the apron. I'll show you how a professional does it. And then you and Dutch and Jaggers just wrestled 10 minutes and then Lex just stood on the apron for the entire match. I, I can see me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad you didn't know this. I'm glad I could tell you a story then. But yeah, so Dutch has said that one to me a couple of times. Uh, <clears throat> we'll move on. Mark Williamson, do you know anything about a rumoured storyline whereby you and the other horsemen eventually turn on Flair and what such a scenario might have looked like? So was that ever on the cards? No, not that I know of. But I wasn't involved in those brainstorming things, and I, I never heard of that storyline. Would J.J. Dillon be filtering information from the booking office to you at this time, just so you knew where you were going in the next few months? Um, I mean, th there wasn't really any filtering to do because, I mean, <clears throat> we were figured in and we were involved in, in everything. So, you know, I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a secret and uh, it wasn't, it wasn't bad and it wasn't a secret. How many horsemen reunions have you done like on the conventions and stuff? <clears throat> um, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight, something like that over the years. <clears throat> I know that I know that it is um, the last one that we did was uh, in Nashville a couple of years ago. Maybe last, maybe it was last summer, a year ago, hmm. summer. Do you think AEW is going to bring one because now they've signed Ric Flair and his energy drink to a two-year deal? So, and then apparently oh. Arn's just left now as well. So it never seems to quite a, a four horsemen reunion on the big screen essentially. Do you think that'll ever happen? Uh, I don't think so. No? No. Nah. I mean, they, they finished with me a year ago, and uh, to bring me back doesn't mean anything. And uh, Arn, you know, I mean, they might, Tony may want to bring back a different version of the Horsemen, but if you don't bring back the ones that are in the Hall of Fame with Rick, it diminishes to some degree, but anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll get to Rick on a, in a second uh, again. <clears throat> Do you think Ole should have been in the Hall of Fame with you guys with the Four Horsemen? Um, that wasn't our choice by any means. I was very surprised when uh, I got the call from the WWE uh, for them to do it. Uh, it was uh, Oli was certainly there at the beginning of it because of him and Arn being the tag team. Uh, I don't know that the best group of us was the group that did go into the Hall of Fame because we could, we, Oli, you had to wrestle Oli style. Arn, Barry, and myself and Rick we could adapt to anybody. So that made us uh, way more flexible talent-wise. Mm. 